During that first trip into Afghanistan in 1979, I walked with the Mojahideen and spent many weeks with them traveling at night to avoid being seen by the helicopter gunships which would patrol the areas. We rested during the day, subsisting only on a diet of tea and bread. I was astonished to see that so many villages had been destroyed with no inhabitants left to tell the tale. The roads were all blocked or under government control, so we had to walk everywhere. There were no bicycles, no taxis, no cars, no buses, there was nothing. I I was very affected by the culture and the beauty of the country. It was a different way of life with no modern conveniences, no electricity, no running water. I was drawn to the simplicity of the lifestyle. Everything was reduced to basics. Then a few months later, the Soviets invaded, and suddenly everybody in the world wanted to see pictures of Afghanistan. Those first trips over the border in disguise marked the start of an enduring fascination that changed my life and my career. I lived and moved with the Mojahideen, sharing their food, their living quarters, running the same risks, coming under fire. But I realized that I was less interested in depicting the brief moments of frontline action than in telling the stories of these people who were living through these pivotal times, people who were caught in the middle between these warring factions. I was more interested in the long lulls between the action when I got to spend time with the men as they prayed and ate, played games, pranks, joked around to pass the time and plan their next moves. I had to cross back over the border from Afghanistan back into Pakistan so I could ship my film back home. I thought I'd better hide my films in case I got stopped and arrested, maybe frisked. I had risked my life to take those images and I wasn't gonna give them up easily. I thought if I got stopped by the police and searched, it'd be better if I hid the films inside the clothing that I was wearing and put sort of empty rolls of film into the camera. At different times in my career, in various countries, I've actually had to give my film to the police or the security or some military people. Otherwise, they would have put me in jail. Many times in certain countries, I would shoot Kodachrome knowing that they could never process the film locally and would probably get frustrated and either give them back to me or just throw them away. When I went back over the border back into Pakistan after having been in Afghanistan for a few weeks, I had blisters on my feet I had saddle sores, clothing that hadn't been washed in days. I put these rolls of film, which I had sewn into the lining of my pants and my my shirt. These were among the first images of the conflict in Afghanistan that the world was seeing. I witnessed a deep camaraderie amongst the fighters who, in their view, were on the greatest mission of their lives. They weren't looking at the calendar. They didn't even worry much about casualty numbers. The harder the fight was, the stronger they became. Walking in the snow without boots high up in the Hindu Kush was commonplace. Those men were as tough as it gets. These were the proud men who were girding for a war in a place where ancient codes still prevailed. It is impossible for anybody to spend so much time with people who have suffered and are still suffering at the hands of history and not be moved by the dignity with which they attempt to preserve their daily lives and traditions. I have described Afghanistan as at once pastoral and chaotic, peaceful and violent, destroyed and resilient, and wonderfully welcoming, yet deeply inhospitable at times. I have been back to Afghanistan probably more than 30 times over the years. I have exposed the hardships and injustices faced by the Hazara people, a Shiite minority heavily discriminated against by the Sunni Pashtun majority. I have made many Afghan friends and have always depended on trusted fixers, translators, and guides who have helped me negotiate the potentially dangerous situations of tribal politics and urban lawlessness. From the start, I was less interested in the politics than the stories of individuals. I have always felt such an empathy and understanding towards those who are suffering or are excluded, whether it be because of poverty, conflict, persecution, 
or the forces of nature. 